If you want to see what the DJI Neo is capable of and how to get the most out of this drone, then you've come to the right video. Also, I finally got ND filters for the Neo. So we're going to be putting it head to head against the Avata 2 and we're going to do a detailed comparison of these two drones while flying FPV so you can see which one is right for you. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you something really interesting about the Neo that I don't think anyone on YouTube has found out about yet. So you're definitely going to want to see that. The first step to getting cinematic footage with any drone is getting your shutter speed correct. And unless you're shooting around sunset or sunrise, you're going to need ND filters to do that. ND filters are basically these little sunglasses that you get to put over the lens of your drone. And Freewell's got a really smart solution here. They basically got this little adhesive plate that you stick on the front of the camera and then their filters just clip on the front like that with magnets. A lot of people find these camera settings really confusing so I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible. So using the DJI controller which comes with the Flymore combo or the DJI goggles you're going to go to the bottom right corner of the front screen and change your exposure from auto to pro mode. And now we're going to set our white balance from auto onto manual so that it sticks on that white balance and doesn't change in the video. Then we're going to go to our exposure settings and we're going to change our ISO and shutter both from auto to manual. ISO we want to keep on 100 to reduce our noise and then shutter we're going to drop down to 1 1 20th of a second. And you can see it's way overexposed there. And you might be wondering why I'm saying 1 over 1 20th of a second instead of 1 over 60th of a second. And that's because the Neo uses digital stabilization in the camera. And if you drop the shutter speed too low, then you get some weird artifacts. So 1 over 1 20th of a second is the sweet spot I found. And then we pop our ND on the front there. I'm using the polarized version because we're flying over water. But you really don't have to. You can stick with the normal version, especially if you're flying with FPV. And now you can see that the exposure is much better. That number on the bottom right is now around zero, which is what we want. And if you find that it's either too dark or too bright, then you can switch out the ND filter until you get that number on zero. Now, the next things we need to do are go into our main settings, camera, and this is really important. We need to lower our sharpness on the default of zero all the way down to minus two and this is going to give you a much better image. You can keep noise reduction on zero. And then finally in the control tab we're going to go to gain and expo and we're going to lower the max angular velocity down to 30 degrees and that's going to give us smoother turning in flight and then we're going to keep all of the gains as stock and we're going to change the max control speed up to 20 or 20 to 30, somewhere in between there. And then we're going to change our tilt smoothness all the way up to 10. And that's going to make sure that when we're tilting the gimbal up and down, we get a really smooth cinematic shot. Right, let's take this up into the air and see what we can get. This is the footage from the Neo basically straight out of the camera. I have applied a slight correction with the white balance and the tint to get it more natural looking. If you'd like to see a video about how to color grade drone footage, let me know in the comments down below and maybe I'll make a video in the future all about that. So now that we've done our cinematic shots, I'm going to put the drone back to its stock settings and we're going to do the same moves and hopefully my shots previously look way better than the stock settings. It's all going to come down to personal preference, but I definitely prefer the footage on the left, which is with my cinematic settings applied. The footage is just a little bit more pleasing without so much digital sharpness, and you've also got a little bit of motion blur in the ocean by using that ND filter. I got so many compliments in my last Neo video about where I was shooting that I decided to come back here again to do some FPV testing. And today we've got the Neo and the Avata again, but now we have free well ND filters for both of them. So we're really gonna get the best video performance out of both of these drones and we can properly put them head to head. I'm actually really stoked about the weather today because there's almost no wind. 
and last time I was here it was really windy so hopefully that makes it a lot better to get more cinematic FPV shots with the Neo and I can't screen record the goggles but for these settings of course we're going to use minus two sharpness and we're actually going to use one over 60th of a second shutter speed this time because we're stabilizing in gyro flow I think it'll be fine to go for the lower shutter speed and I really want to see if we can get that nice motion blur while flying fast with the FPV. This is the unstabilized footage from the Neo and you can see when we use gyro flow it applies a small crop and we get really nice stabilized footage. So this is with stabilization off and this is with it on. And it ends up with a really good picture. I am very pleasantly surprised with how good this looks. Using the ND filters with the Neo 4 FPV gives you that really nice little motion blur and you get much more cinematic looking footage in my opinion. This time flying without the wind made a huge difference and you can see the footage from the Neo is much smoother and overall just more cinematic. And you can see it actually looks pretty sharp even with minus two sharpness applied to the footage. And you're gonna see why at the end of this video. The Neo definitely does feel slightly sluggish for an FPV drone, but at the end of the day with its size and price, it's really not too bad. After watching this footage when I got home, my whole outlook on the Neo changed quite a lot. This is now something I would definitely consider keeping in my camera bag for particularly tight FPV shots or somewhere where I don't want to risk a more expensive drone like the Avata 2. We've got the Avata 2 with the ND filter on the front same setting so we can compare the camera side by side. Now obviously this is going to be better but the question is how much better and is the Neo worth it for an FPV drone? Before we compare the footage from the Avata 2 to the Neo I want to show you something really cool from this video sponsor. This is the micro SD card from the Avata 2 and I just deleted all the footage of it but it's not a problem and I'm going to show you why. Here's our micro SD card from the Avata 2 and as you can see, this card is completely empty. But when we open Wondershare Recover It, we can now see our SD card there. And when we click scan, even with the quick scan, it picks up all those deleted files basically immediately. And now it's as simple as selecting all the files we want and clicking recover and choosing a place for the software to save the files that it recovers. To recover about 20 gigs of footage, it took about five minutes, which is really not that bad. And as you can see here, we have our Avata 2 footage safely recovered and ready for viewing. The great thing about the software is the new version can recover data from NAS drives, external hard drives, external SSDs, so basically every storage device you might have. I would really recommend downloading the free trial of the software with the link in the description below, just so that you have it when you run into this nightmare scenario. And now that we've got our Avata 2 footage recovered, we can take a look at what we got and compare it to the Neo. This is our Avata 2 footage after it's been put through Gyroflow and you'll see I've also applied a correction LUT as well as a light color grade. You'll probably notice right away that the Avata 2 is much faster and because it's more powerful it's also going to be a bit smoother especially when you're flying in stronger winds. Of course we've got that beautiful motion blur which is made possible by putting that ND filter on the camera. Now let's see what the Avata 2 looks like side by side with the DJI Neo. Instead of telling you what to think, I'm going to put the footage on screen side by side and let you decide for yourself which is better and if the Avata 2 is worth the extra money. By the way, flying both of these drones at basically full out speed, I was getting about 5 minutes of flight time with the Neo and about 8 minutes of flight time with the Avata 2. You might have thought while watching this that the FPV Neo footage looks a lot better than the standard Neo footage and you would be correct in saying that. If you put them side by side here you'll see that the FPV footage is a lot sharper and just holds a lot more detail and this is why. 
This is video footage taken from the Neo in the FPV mode. And this is footage taken from the Neo in the exact same spot in normal video mode. As you can see, there is a huge 220% crop in the video. This is to allow for the digital stabilization of the Neo, but unfortunately, it means that you're gonna drop quite a lot of quality at the same time. Now, this crop is necessary for the Neo to do its digital stabilization and still get smooth footage in the normal video modes. Anyways, that's me for this video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, and also don't forget to download the free trial of Wondershare Recover It, so you've got that software ready if you ever run into that terrible scenario of losing footage or having a corrupted card.